On to this session, we're going to be looking at policy development. Now, the first aspect of policy development we're looking at has to do with organizational learning. Uh, policies shape what is done within an organization. And how an organization learns is a little bit different to how individuals learn. And organizational leadership has as one of its main challenges that process of organizational learning and guiding the development of an organization over time. So in the tutorial this week, come prepared to discuss your own organizational learning challenges for the organization you've selected for your transformation plan. Now, so the first aspect of organizational learning is this idea that organizations also create, retain and transfer knowledge within that organization. Um, and how that develops and occurs over time is an important part of any organizational infrastructure. Um, now, it can be through key members of staff, but also through documentation processes, um, management, computerized systems, a whole range of different aspects that help maintain an organization um, with the knowledge that's inherent in that organization and how it can improve upon processes over time. So there are a range of different aspects of that, but one of the key ones we're going to look at is the idea of a community of learning, where there are various communities within an organization that support learning um, and this can be just within the organization, but it can also be between organizations. So for example, one school communicating how they have done something differently to another school, or one teacher or classroom or class group communicating how they do things differently, or a nation communicating how they've done things differently to help other nations learn how to do things in education better. Now within communities of learning, oops, we also have um, a number of subgroups. So one is the individual learning. Oops, what would you say? Um, and this is the smallest sort of subgroup within an organization. Now it may be individual teachers, individual students, or individual states or countries, but it's, a, it's the individual aspect. And they tend to, um, that learning tends to disappear when that individual leaves. Then you have group learning, where you have a group of um, individuals. So in this case, it might be a group of um, communities or group of schools, group of institutions, um, or it could be a group of teachers within that, say all the year five teachers. Um, and if they were all to leave, then there would be a loss of that group learning. But it tends to be that individuals might leave, but the group learning would be retained. Now, there's also a process, what's called error detection and correction within group learning. So how teachers can assist one another, or it might be states within a country, um, but there are some checks and balances that can occur with the learning process that's supported by groups that isn't necessarily supported by individuals. Um, so when, say, one teacher is having real difficulties, say, with classroom management, then other teachers in that group may be able to assist and help them with um, the policies of the organization and different approaches, or even knowing individual students that are having difficulties with and suggesting other approaches to working with those students. So there can be a way of, of a group assisting that individuals don't necessarily have. Um, so again, that goes through another, different, another few aspects of task independence, um, where group members, what individuals are doing don't necessarily affect the group, but the group can help with, with the individuals. Um, and there's also social psychological awareness, um, where a group can actually have an identity within a larger system. So let's say again, the year five teachers would consider that they would have a particular identity um, and different ways of doing things and different habits and processes 
that they could recognize that not necessarily other groups within the school would have or it may be a particular identity that a, a state has within a country um, let's say in australia new south wales may do things somewhat differently to other states and they would see that as a particular group identity around how they approach educational issues and then you have organizational learning which is the learning processes of the organization as a whole and how it adapts and changes to different environments and circumstances and we certainly saw that occurring around the pandemic but different organizations can approach things differently and approach how they um, make improvements or address challenges in different ways and can certainly learn from other organizations in how they've approached doing things and then you've got the inter-organizational learning that learning from other organizations um, some of it can be very formal um, with documentation and research done on different approaches and some can be just very informal when a new staff member comes from another school or another country they bring a whole lot of new ideas and they percolate into various other organizations through that gradual process but it can also be done by visits to other organizations um, and again that can be very formalized or very informalized just through knowing people in those organizations through to um, organized tours i've taken a lot of organizational tours to the united states and canada and um, new zealand and things of that nature where we take teachers along and we examine what's happening in those countries to explicitly learn about what's occurring to bring back then to organizations in australia different approaches and this is just a graphic showing various aspects of that and how there can be barriers and teamwork and leadership and culture and resourcing and um, structures and characteristics of all those different um, learning processes so in examining your own education organization think about how it goes about learning you're going to be introducing a new educational approach and technology so the organization is going to have to learn and adapt to that and that will have to happen at an organizational and a group and an individual level and also potentially at an inter-organizational level where others will learn from what your organization has done around the use of that educational technology so think through some of those processes that could be occurring and share onto teams uh, in particular in this example share the different organizational groups and communities that you can see occurring within your organization okay and we have a few readings for you to go through this week um, the first is the concept of an organizational learning just going into a little bit more detail about organizational learning theory and it breaks it up into a range of different uh, models with different focuses and learning modes so these relate to the approaches of behaviorism cognitivism social cognitivism and the Gestalt method but read the paper and have a look at those different concepts and we'll discuss those in the tutorial and it goes through then to look at these focuses um, individual learning the processes or systems within the organization the culture and metaphors that um, the organization may adopt how knowledge is managed within the organization processes of continuous improvement or learning and innovations and creative processes that could be in place in the organization and just so uh, see how this document has looked at these different approaches and concepts and the examples of practices that you may be able to incorporate into your own transformational learning plan and come along to the tutorial prepared to discuss the educational challenges and technologies that you are hoping to see transform your organization from this perspective of a learning organization next is looking at leadership and how different leadership strategies can assist in supporting an organizational's transformation journey so have a look at this um, document around leadership strategies and another one related to that is digital education making change happen um, which looks in particular around digital technologies and how they can be um, supported in changing within an organization 
because again, in your transformation plan, you're going to have to consider the leadership processes involved in achieving your transformation. And come along and sh on teams, share an educational challenge that you've noticed and how leadership applied, um, leadership it was involved in that transformation. Um, was it supportive? Was it non-supportive? How did they go about um, being involved in the challenge or change that you saw occurring? And come along to the tutorial prepared to discuss organizational learning and leadership challenges. So from the focus of a better understanding of organizational learning and also of how leadership can support various changes within an organization. And we'll explore then how these can relate to your um, new educational technology that you want to introduce as part of your transformation planning. So that's it. And I look forward to seeing you in the tutorials.